Now let's get back to our guest host, Mark Farber, editor and publisher of the Gloom, Boom and Doom Report. We've got a message coming through from one of our viewers saying, are Japanese equities one of the few undervalued assets in the world? Um, thoughts on Tokyo stocks, Mark? Yes, I think that Japanese equities are inexpensive, but I don't think they'll run away right now. I think they'll move sideways to down somewhat because of the correction I'm expecting in global markets that probably has already begun. But from a longer term perspective, if you have to choose between, say, U.S. equities, uh, emerging market equities, Japanese equities, European equities, I think that uh, people should overweight Japanese equities. Mark, this just in, the Spider Gold Trust holdings there have jumped by just under 18.2 tonnes, 1.5%. Is that the best vehicle to take a punt on gold if you do believe it's going to go higher? Or do you buy the physical asset? Do you buy the miners? Well, basically, I don't think that people should punt on gold, but they should be their own central banks and gradually accumulate gold reserves as a currency. And uh, they should basically hold it physically, but not in the U.S., outside the U.S. And why is that? Is that because of the, uh, the carry costs? Well, I think that uh, there is the risk that the U.S. will once again, as they did in 1933, uh, collect the gold, expropriate the gold. They will not take it away and not pay anything. They'll pay probably the market price. And afterwards, they'll revalue it by, say, five times. Okay, Dr. Farber, uh, here's another email all the way from Egypt. This is uh, Mustafa Esmat writing in. It says, uh, oil should go higher on inflation, but in the meantime, the doctor predicts a slowdown in America in the U.S. economy uh, will drag oil lower. The question is, will we see oil hit uh, a historic high before the slowdown in America, or will it go back to the 80s? before rising on anticipated QE3 inflation in case of a slow American economy. What do you think, Doctor? Well, I think that if you look at all asset classes or stocks, different sectors, I think oil is relatively attractive in two scenarios. One, you have a total blow-up in the Middle East, which will cut supplies and drive prices higher which is a possibility, the very bearish scenario. You have essentially widespread war in the Middle East, which I think is likely in time. Or you have a very optimistic scenario about the world, in which case oil demand will go up and outstrip the increase in supply. So in both cases, whether you're very optimistic about the world or extremely pessimistic, as I am, you have essentially... A relatively favorable risk reward in oil. Okay, and if we can also get you to talk about something else in the commodities complex, silver, oh, we just saw it climbing to fresh 31 year highs. One of our uh, viewers writes in, uh, where do you see it going before the end of QE2 this year? Well, as I said, I think all asset markets may correct. Uh, it would fit with my scenario. A correction in asset markets, a rebound in bond prices, whereby long term I'm of course very negative about US government bonds, and possibly a strengthening, as John pointed out earlier, of the US dollar, temporary. But longer term, I think you can be assured that they will print more money. It's only a question that they will stop QE2. I think that's very likely and wait and if the market say the stock market drops 10 20 percent they'll go and uh, implement qe3 4 5 6 7. mark what you're highlighting is a market that's going to be very focused on some of the macro events uh, still we've got ben bernacki going to be holding a press conference after his um uh, fomc meetings now and giving out information to the markets what do you make of that? Do you think it's good to have a more timely reporting back to the markets, given that investors are looking for information to trade on anyway? Well, the thing is this. I used to think that he's not particularly smart, but now I also think that he's not particularly honest. And uh, I actually don't pay any attention anymore to what he says. I just look at 
say, inflation figures, but real inflation figures, not the ones that are published by the government, and I look at market action. I mean, there must be a reason why over the last 10 years the price of gold and silver are up more than five times. It's uh, money printing and the loss of purchasing power of paper money. And this is what central banks have been doing, not just in the U.S., but also elsewhere. Mark, as far as investment themes that you like, I know that you and Jim Rogers have talked about this a lot. Farmland in the U.S. especially has appreciated, really reflecting this bull run that we've seen in the agricultural commodities markets. Tell us about that. How much more upside is there, and how do you, how do you gain exposure to that particular asset class? You see, I was just telling Bernie, when I came in 1973 to Hong Kong, I thought that property prices are very high here compared to, say, Switzerland. And they were very high. And every year, basically, with few exceptions, property prices have continued to go up. I think farmland relatively speaking, is not terribly expensive. Can there be a setback? Yes, maybe you buy today a farm and you lose 20% of your money. But to lose 20% of your money is maybe better than to lose everything. So I think that people today, investors, need to diversify. They need to own some real estate. They need to own some farmland. They need to own some equities, some cash, and some precious metals. Okay, uh, thank you very much for that, Mark. We're going to pick up the conversation with you in just a bit, but uh, many of you appreciate uh, you getting through some of their questions. Uh, thank you very much for that.